This week, I celebrated my 24th birthday. In those 24 years, I've been a footballer for 17. 17 years where I've learned so much and gained so many valuable experiences about the game of football. Starting out as a scrawny 7-year-old kid and rising through the ranks, to then moving away from home at 16 and battling low self-confidence, to then finally signing my first professional contract at 22. Today, I sit here in front of you, where I will share 24 lessons that I've learned, one for each year of my life. Lessons that have made me both a better footballer, but also a better person. Lessons that you could implement into your own career to move on to the next level. Let's begin. Number one, every journey is different. When you chase a dream, it's natural to compare yourself to others who have achieved the exact thing that you want to achieve. This is a very logical approach and exactly what I did when I was younger. However, the problem is that your career will not be the same as the ones that you compare yourself to. Because in the end, we are all different. Some players sign their first pro contract at 16, some at 22, and some as late as 28. We live in different parts of the world under different circumstances, we have different strengths and different weaknesses, and we're different people with different views of the world. So why then should our approach be the same? I'm not saying that you shouldn't try the training methods of these players or that you should not be inspired by them, of course you should. But in the end, you should accept and embrace your own unique journey and think that one day the younger generations will look towards your example and draw inspiration from your story. Number two, don't be afraid to aim high. I can say straight away, I have not reached the goals that I had when I was a kid. I can say with hand to heart that I wanted to be the best player in the world, I wanted to win Champions Leagues, I wanted to win Ballon d'Ors, but I haven't been close to reaching those goals. For a very long time, I felt like a failure for not reaching these goals. But then I learned the lesson. The lesson that these goals were not there for me purely for the sake of achieving them, but instead to act as a compass along the way. So don't be afraid to aim high with your goals out of a fear of maybe not reaching them, because that is not the important thing here. Maybe you'll succeed in doing those things, or maybe you won't. The most important thing is that they pull you forward in a direction that motivates you and keeps you going. Number three, the importance of self-confidence. I think none of us can deny the importance that self-confidence has on our performance. You could literally be the most skillful player ever to enter a football field. But if you don't have the confidence to back that up, you will never be able to reach your full potential. Two things I've learned about self-confidence. First of all, it's a skill that you can develop. Some have it more naturally and some may need to work more on it, but it is something that everyone can develop. Secondly, and I think this is the most important thing, is that your confidence levels will always be subject to change. It will go up, but it will also come back down. And the sooner you realize and accept this, that sometimes you just won't feel the most confident. The easier and quicker it will be to bounce back from a bad round of four, because you know that eventually things will start moving in the right direction again. Number four, skill moves are overrated. When I was younger, I used to watch a lot of skill compilations and then immediately after, I always tried to learn those skills. The thing with skill moves though, is that they represent something that looks very cool, but more often than not, they're not very useful in a game. 99% of the time, you want to keep things simple. One or two touch with a quick pass, a cross or a shot. Even when you're dribbling, it's more about taking the space that is available to you rather than pulling out a rainbow flick. Now, there are definitely a time and place for these skills, but again, we're talking about the simple stuff. A shoulder drop or a single step over to gain that little bit of extra space to pull off your next action. I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn the amazing skills that you see the top players perform, but the lesson here is to know that skill moves should be used to gain an advantage out on the pitch. And in 99% of cases, that means doing the simple things really well. Number five, a plan doesn't guarantee success. Next lesson is an incredibly important lesson for so many players out there. When I was younger, I had a tendency to try to plan everything out in my new detail, because I thought that this was the best and most optimal way to improve. As I grew older and older, I started to grow more and more frustrated because the plans that I set up never really seemed to work. Then I finally realized, it's not the plans that create success, but the actions that I perform on a daily basis. 
It may sound stupid and like the most obvious thing in the world, but I think it's more common than you think to overemphasize the importance of a perfect plan rather than actually taking the action. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't make plans and follow those plans, but instead develop a more healthy relationship with them and recognize the role that they play in your development. Number six, a perfectionist is good, but good enough is better. Another extremely common trait among aspiring footballers that the previous lesson is a direct result of is perfectionism. For many, many years, I was an extreme perfectionist, where I had sky-high standards and always expected a perfect outcome out of everything that I did. This made me tense up out on the field for the fear of making a mistake. And I could never play to my full potential, and it also translated into other parts of my life where it almost always had a negative effect. I couldn't see this in the moment, but eventually over time I learned that a perfect outcome will never be attainable. No matter how hard I try, I can always do really, really well, but I will never be perfect, and there's no one who is. I believe you should always aim high, but you should never expect perfectionism. Good enough will always be a better mindset to have, where you still have high standards, but where you are understanding and acceptant that mistakes will inevitably happen. Number seven, strengths first, weaknesses second. I often get the question whether you should prioritize your strengths or your weaknesses in your development. My opinion in this have swayed over the years, but now I'm a firm believer that you should always prioritize your strengths. Because your strength is what will set you apart from all the other players, not your weaknesses. You should always try to have a complete and holistic training plan, but don't make the mistake of thinking that every quality needs to be a 10 out of 10. Having a good base foundation of skill will allow you to reach a very high level. But it's your unique strengths that will set you apart and allow you to play at the very highest levels. Number 8. Always, always apply context. A few years back I started working with a mentor and that's when I learned the life-changing concept of context. And today that plays a part in every single decision that I take. For example, I often get the question on how to train. And really the answer will always differ. Because you have to apply context to your specific situation. I can't say that I train exactly this many hours in a week because first of all that's not very relevant. But secondly, it will always be different because of context. I can tell you to train every single day because that will get you the results quicker. But what if you have two games that week? Or what if you have a slight injury? Or what if your body's just not used to that type of training load? There are so many factors that goes into making a decision within your career. But when you start to apply the principles and the concepts that exist into your career and then apply them into your unique and current context, that's when you will really start to see the results. Number 9. Is gym training dangerous? A common misconception that is out there in a large part of the football community today is that gym training is somehow dangerous, that it will cause injuries and make you slow. I can tell you right away that this couldn't be further from the truth. If you're not utilizing the power of strength training, you're really missing out on an important area within your development, especially in modern football. A stronger muscle will have better potential to be a more explosive muscle. A stronger muscle can endure more before starting to get fatigued. A stronger muscle is a muscle less prone to get injured. I started to get into strength training when I was 11 years old, and I have kept it up ever since. What is important to recognize, however, is that you should start off easy and then work your way up. Your physical development is for the long run, and you're not looking for quick results. Learn the proper movements and techniques before increasing the difficulty in terms of weight, speed, or intensity. Number 10. Master your mind. To make it as a footballer, it's important to develop in all four key pillars of the game. Technically, tactically, physically, and mentally. But what I've learned is that the most important out of these is really your mental skills. Let me explain why. Imagine you're currently not good enough in certain aspects of the game. 
your passing may be too inaccurate, your first touch may be poor, or you just lack the endurance to get through a 90 minute game. Because you have mastered the mental side of the game, that will help you get over the hurdles that you're facing. But if you don't have that in place, but instead you have a lot of talent, then that talent one day will not be enough anymore, because you didn't have it the drive or the ambition to keep on learning and keep on progressing. That is why the mental side of the game is king, and why you never should neglect that in your development. Number 11. The importance of balance. Today there is a strong bias towards dedicating everything to football and to improving. However, I think that this mindset can be a bit misleading, and in the worst cases, even prevent you from progressing. In my belief, you should definitely dedicate your maximum to the things that you want. Because the more of something you do, and the more focused you are when doing it, the better results you will have. But, I also believe that it's vital to have a balance within your life. And I'm not just talking about balancing your recovery with your training. I'm talking about non-football related stuff like your family, your friends or school. From what I've learned, if you don't have that balance in place over the long term, you're less likely to reach your goals. A greater balance will mean that it's less likely that you will burn out. You will be more motivated and when things aren't quite working out the way you want in your football, then you have that safety net to fall back to when you're trying to work your way back into form. This balance will once again be different for everyone. And it's something that you have to experiment with over time to find your personal sweet spot where you're still working hard but where that hard work is more likely to lead you to the results that you want because you have a great balance in place. Number 12. Every choice you make matters. Every day you have to make choices. Choices like which skills to train, what to eat, when to go to sleep, and so many more. This means that if the choices you make aligns with your goals, then logically you will get closer to your goals, but the same goes for the other way around. This means that you're never stagnant. You're either either moving forward or backward. If you have read Atomic Habits by James Clear, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the compounding effects of positive and negative habits. And if you haven't, it's definitely a must read for anyone looking to improve in any walk of life. Here it's just important to recognize and realize that this is the case. I don't want you to obsess or overanalyze every single decision that you take, but instead look at it from a bigger perspective and know that the more positive choices that I make and actions that I take, the quicker my progress will be because of the compounding effects of that 1% improvement. Number 13. No one cares more about your career than you. Another important lesson that I've learned is that when all is said and done, no one will ever care more about your career than you will. This may seem harsh, but I can tell you that there are plenty of times throughout my career where I have relied and trusted on people to assist me in my development. But the more time have gone on, I have realized that people will almost always prioritize themselves. This is not weird, to be honest, because we all have one life and we all want to do something with it. And also, don't get me wrong, there are definitely amazing people that I've had around me that have always wanted to help. But no one can ever give that 100% and undivided attention to you and your goals, but yourself. That's why it's important to understand that you can always look to others and acquire others to help you out, but in the end, the one that you will always be able to count on and rely on is yourself. Number 14. You create your own luck. Some people believe in luck, others don't. I'm of the conviction that we create our own luck. From the outside, some people may consider it lucky how I signed my first professional contract. One team out of 30 in Sweden suddenly reached out and wanted to offer me a trial. What they failed to see though is that that was a direct result of a chain reaction of events 
over the course of a 15 year period. A 15 year period where I accumulated the skills and the knowledge that I needed to be able to make that step on the field, but also the actions that I took off the field to create this luck. In 2021, I made sure that we filmed all of our games so that I was gonna be able to put together a highlight video that I could then send out to professional teams after the season who in turn could then reach back to me and offer me that trial. Once again, being consistent in these small actions that may seem insignificant on their own, but which in the end compounds to something bigger, and in this case, a professional contract. Number 15, the importance of progressive overload. The next lesson is incredibly important to keep progress in your career and to not halt in your development, and that is to implement the principle of progressive overload. Progressive overload means that you're constantly trying to make your workouts harder and harder in some way. That could be in terms of increasing the volume, the load, or the intensity. It could also be by increasing the difficulty of your sessions. Because in the end, that is what will spark the adaptation that will allow you to improve. I have a video where I explain this more thoroughly, called the five golden principles of football training, that you can watch right up here. Number 16, the power of a highlight video. As I said in lesson 14, small things add up to get you big results. And without the highlight video that I made in 2021, I wouldn't be where I am today. That is why it's always important to try to collect footage of yourself playing over time and then try to piece that together into a highlight video. But why is a highlight video so powerful? because it provides the viewer with a short and concise image of you as a player that can then allow them to form an opinion on you and in the case of a coach or agent, take a decision whether your talent is worth their time and effort. The thing is, you only really need to create a highlight video once and then that highlight video is working for you, showing you to the world at your best. Sure, you may have to update it once in a while, but that is a very small price to pay on the insane return you can have on that investment. Number 17, hard work is not the key to success. An incredibly important realization that I've had, which may sound surprising, is that hard work is not the key to success in your career. The most important thing is not to run yourself into the ground once in a while, but to come back and do that again and again. To reach the point where I am today, I didn't put in the work for one or two years. But for a period of 17 years, where I've constantly come back time and time again to get better each and every time. You should work hard, that's not what I'm saying. But if you're working so hard that you cannot be consistent, then you need to consider and reevaluate the direction you're headed in. Number 18. The biggest thing to separate players. I previously said that your mindset is the most important skill to be able to progress in your career, and I stand by that statement. But when you're on the field, I believe that the biggest key differentiator between players at different levels is not your skill on the ball or how fast you can run, but how fast and how efficient your brain can work. I have played at varying levels of the game, and I have noticed that there are many players that are fairly skillful or quick or strong, but when you move up the levels, you notice that the biggest difference is the speed of play and the quality of the decisions that the players take at these levels. The ability to first interpret a situation and then take the best decision possible in that given situation and then being able to do that consistently over a 90 minute game. Look at a player like Sergio Busquets. Definitely not the most athletic or most skillful player of all time, but the calm that he has in pressured situations is almost unmatched because of his cognitive ability. His ability to read the game, know his surroundings, and then execute a decision based on that. So if there's one ability I believe that you should focus on more, is definitely your cognitive ability, and the earlier you can do it, the better. I wish I would have focused more on it when I was younger, and I believe I would play at a much higher level if I had. But I can only work from where I am right now, and tell you what I have learned, so that you don't necessarily have to make that same mistake. Number 19. You will not always be motivated. 
an incredibly important lesson that I've learned that will help you remain consistent is to not live under the expectation and the delusion that you will always be motivated to keep up the work. Some days, yes, and you should definitely try to take advantage of those days. But there will also be a lot of days when you won't be, where you still have to get out there and do the work. One small tip that I can give you here that will make your life a little bit easier when it comes to this is to just get yourself to the field or the gym or whatever you're trying to do. Because if you're not motivated, but you just get yourself to the location where you're supposed to do your training, then you will almost feel obligated to do the training anyway. Number 20. Try less. The logical approach to fix a problem is to try to find a solution. And the bigger the problem is, the more you will have to think and to try to find that solution. But what I've learned is that the solution sometimes is not to try more, but to try less. When you try too much, you may start to overthink and overanalyze what may be a simple problem. So sometimes if you feel stuck with whatever you do, try to back out of that situation, look at it from a bigger perspective, and then try to attack your problem from a different angle. Number 21. Intention is everything. Another thing you could try to be more consistent is to set intentions with the things that you want to do. Because that has been shown to make it much more likely that you will actually do those things. You can imagine one situation, but in two different scenarios. Let's say that tomorrow morning you're going to do a training session. In scenario A, you go to bed, wake up the next morning and hope to get to the field to the training. And if you're motivated, maybe you'll get there. Now instead, in scenario B, you prepare all your training gears so that you don't have to think about that in the morning and the night before you have set the intention and said to yourself that tomorrow morning I will go out and do a dribbling session at this field at this time. Now you have told your brain what you want to do and this will make it much more likely that you'll actually do it. I promise you it may sound simple but give it a try and you'll see that it will help you remain more consistent. Number 22. The world is delusion. A lesson I learned more recently was when I sat through one of my psychology sessions when I heard the phrase, the world is delusion. When we're going through our day-to-day -day life, we all see the same things, but our individual interpretation of the world will be very different. That is because we view the world through our own lenses. Lenses that have been formed throughout our lives through the experiences that we have had. You and I will not see the same things because our interpretation of the world will be different. But what we want to understand here is that we can use this to work to our advantage. Because now we know that every emotion we feel is the result of a thought that we initially have on a matter which in turn is created within our own minds from the lenses that we view the world through. With this knowledge, it can be easier to detach from negative situations or negative emotions that we maybe won't like, because we know that our thoughts is more often than not the reality. This is definitely something that takes practice, but as with everything else, the more you'll do it, you will get better and better at it. Number 23. The future is unknown. A lot of players ask me whether they can go pro or not, and they are extremely worried about it. My answer to that will be, nobody knows if they can go pro or not before they do it. There are no guarantees to anything to anyone, and the only way that you will ever know is to try, and to give it your absolute best shot. And that is also part of the charm as well, because we obsess so much about the end goal and the destination that we forget about the journey and the day-to-day -day life that is going to take us there. And it's really the journey, the fond memories of you being out on the pitch with the ball at your feet, those are really the memories that you will take with you once you finally decide to hang up your boots. Number 24. A final lesson. I want to leave you with maybe the most important lesson, because the older we get, it's the one that we tend to forget about the most. And that is to keep having fun. We got into this game because it was our big passion. But somewhere along the way, this seemed to change. 
and instead it became this overly serious thing that we spend our entire Woken day worrying about. The lesson is to try to get into a habit of keep reminding ourselves why we're playing football in the first place. And then to try to keep that passion and that joy for the game alive. Throughout my career and on my way to that first pro contract, that has been a constant battle. And if you want to hear the story of exactly how I became a pro footballer, you can watch the movie Becoming a Pro Footballer. That is probably the best video that I have created on my channel so far. I hope you managed to learn some valuable lessons that you can take with you into your career going forward. And if you did, consider subscribing so that you don't miss similar videos to this in the future. I'll maybe even make an updated version of this video once I turn 25. But that's all for this time, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.